We're seeing that, particularly in Northeast Asia, a lot of the economies that are very much involved in the semiconductor supply chain, Japan, uh, Taiwan, Korea, uh, are we're seeing noticeable uh, tightening up of the supply chain, delays in shipments. We see this in, for example, some of the monthly PMI surveys. And that will have an impact on downstream sectors. Auto production is one of those. Our analysts believe we're probably in the worst period of that right now. That is, we're seeing the biggest disruption downstream industries like auto right now, and that will gradually ease over the back half of the year. But it's something that bears watching, uh, particularly if you see other disruptions to the semiconductor supply chain itself. There was a lot of concern in Taiwan that uh, droughts or the resurgence of uh, you know, a new COVID, COVID outbreak there could result in yeah, a significant yeah. shortfall in production. So far, we haven't seen that. There have been a couple of isolated uh, disruptions, but so far, not enough to cause a, a major disruption to the semi-supply chain, but but something that remains you know, very, uh, very, very close to the balance there very, and, and, and needs to be watched closely over the next several weeks and months. All right, Andrew Kulmain, can we join in this conversation? How do you feel about this uh, global minimum tax policy that's coming up and how receptive Asia would be to it? I mean, does it come up uh, in your internal discussions, uh, given the fact that, uh, you know, it, 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 of course, is one of the ways in which governments all over the world can look to plug the gap and you're talking about rising debt and deficits? Well, as you noted earlier in the program, I mean, that, that has come down to what looks like a 15 percent agreement at the moment. So I think that's going to be less binding on a lot of economies than it might have been previously. Certainly, there were potential impacts uh, would have been larger at a, at a higher agreed minimum tax rate, uh, especially for a number of economies, you know, financial centers in the region and outside of the region that run with, uh, in some cases, tax rates lower than that. With a 15 percent tax rate, the the direct impacts won't be quite as large. And as you also noted, this, there's still a long road ahead to agree something more formally uh, with a broader set of countries. But do think it's important in terms of the incentives for companies to relocate their activities to different jurisdictions. And so that's something that a lot of governments are focused on, you know, wanting to capture the tax revenue, wanting to discourage or at least diminish the incentives for firms to relocate headquarters or or entire operations overseas, and that you know to some extent underpins this this effort. But it's it, there's still a, a road, a significant road ahead, and at this point we don't see you know significant near-term impacts until we get more clarity on what's going to happen.